Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and welcome to another Trig on Tuesday. Now the sharp-eyed amongst you may notice that the board is filled with trigonometric identities. I'm not going to torture you with those today. I just did that for fun last night while I was trying to get to sleep. Today we're going to talk about triangles and I'm going to dedicate today's episode to my good friend, sleeping warrior, Anthony Riley. So let's cue up the music and let's go. Well, I got rid of all those nasty identities. Let's go ahead and start talking about triangles a little bit. Now, we're all familiar with the three, four, five right triangle. Now, I want to kind of go over how we name triangles. So this is triangle ABC. That's the definition of it. But what's what? Okay. The angles are in capital letters. So this is angle A. That's angle B. That's angle C. Now, when you see small letters like side A, that's a side and it's opposite angle A. Likewise, side B is opposite angle B and side C is opposite angle C. Now, there are a couple of rules that we can start thinking about. The first one is that on a plane, the sum of the internal angles of a triangle is always 180. No more, no less. Now, for right triangles, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem says that the square of the hypotenuse, in this case a squared, equals b squared plus c squared. And if you do the math real quick, that's 9, that's 16, that makes that 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. So that's a nice way to find the length of triangles. The problem that you run into is when you see that red one up there. That is not a right triangle. So when I say solve a triangle, you have to be able to tell me the length of each side and all three angles. That's how you solve a triangle. How am I going to do it with that one up there? Well, let's go over a couple techniques. Okay, so we've learned how to name the triangles, name the angles and the sides, and we've learned that the sum of the internal angles is always 180 degrees. For right triangles, we have the Pythagorean theorem, a squared equals b squared plus c squared, but that won't come into play on this because these are not right triangles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to solve for some triangles, and I'm going to give you six possible scenarios. Let's go ahead and show you. The first one is I give you all three angles. Now notice that I've got my triangle and then I, I mark in black that I gave you all three angles. Can you solve this triangle? Well, the answer is no. Now, there are six elements to a triangle. There are three angles and there are three sides. If you have any three of them, you can normally solve for the triangle. This is the exception. Now, triangles with three angles are all similar triangles. However, if we don't know the length of one of the legs, we have no idea what size the triangle is, and there's no way that we can solve that given the information that we have. What if we get an angle, the side in between, and another angle? So we have these two angles and we have the side in between. Now we have two of the angles. We can easily solve for the third because the sum of all angles of a triangle add up to 180. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to sum and solve for that third angle. Likewise, if we have a situation where we have a side and then we have two angles and the side's not in between them, that's a side angle angle triangle as opposed to an angle side angle triangle. We have two angles. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go solve for that third angle. What about these guys here? These have two sides and only one angle. Okay, we don't have any tools to do that right now. And likewise, if we have all three sides, again, we can't sum up the angles because we don't have any of them. Now, are we stuck? Not really. 
Let me show you something a little bit elegant about this triangle. What I've done is I've added what's called an altitude. Now, an altitude splits one angle and comes down and forms two right triangles. And we're going to say it's height h. Now let's look at two of the angles. We have angle A and we have angle B. What is sine A? That would be the height over the hypotenuse. What about angle B down there? What's the sine of angle B? Once again, that would be the height over the hypotenuse, which is side A. Notice anything here. They both share an H. So let's rewrite that a little bit. So here we go. H equals B sine A and H equals A sine B. All we did was we moved the B and the A over to the other side of the equation. Now, since both of these values are equal to H, it would also follow that both of them are equal to each other. So let's go ahead and bring that over here. So here we go. B sine A equals A sine B. Let's go ahead and divide this out. Come up with this. Boy, that's looking promising, isn't it? sine A over A equals sine B over B. Now by doing the same thing, we can also show that sine C over C is also equal to sine A over A and sine B over B. Now this is called the law of sines and we just derived it. You know, sometimes you'll see it like this. Sometimes you'll see it A over sine A equals B over sine B, etc. Well, let's put that up here with the other rules and see whether or not maybe we might be able to solve a little bit more of this triangle. Well, let's use a little mathematical insight and see what the law of sines can do to help us with our triangle problem here. Okay, so let's look at this one right here. We've already solved for that third angle. And the important thing that I want you to notice is that we have an angle and its opposing side. What we need to do is we need to find these two sides over here. We don't know what those are. But do you think the law of sines can help us out? Remember too that I said that if we're looking for sides, we can actually reverse that. Okay, well with keeping with our triangle up here, we're gonna call that angle C, and that's going to be side C. So here's what we have so far. We know side C, and we also know the sine of angle C, because we know the angle, all right? What do we wanna find? We wanna find one of these sides. So let's say this is B over here. We know angle B, so we know the sine of B, but what we don't know is side B right here. Let's rearrange this and just figure it out. It should be pretty simple. I think everybody can see that the way to solve this is that we have C sine B over sine C equals B. So now we know side B. We can repeat the same process and we can also solve for side A. So that's fully, that's fully solved. We don't need to worry about that anymore. So here's what we have. We started off with this. We summed up and found that third angle. We solved for the sides using the law of sines and we're done. Simple as that. What about this one over here? Well, essentially, we can do exactly the same thing because we've got an angle and its opposing side. So all we're going to do is use the law of sines again, and we're going to solve for those two sides. Not a problem. What about this one over here? Now, we have side, side, and angle. Now, here's the thing about this. If you have side, side, angle, by definition, one of the angles is paired up with its side. So, law of sines. Now something that's a little trickier with this one is that we only have this one angle. So rather than use the law of sines to solve for a side, we're going to want to solve for an angle. 
So let me show you that real quick. Again, we're gonna use our same nomenclature up here. Now we're looking for an angle, so we probably should have the sine on top. So let's say sine B over, over B equals, now once we have an equal here, we gotta figure out which one we want to use. Now if we use angle A, we don't know that. We also don't know side A. So we wanna use angle C because we do know side C and we'll solve for angle C. So, so once again, this is what we're trying to solve for. All we have to do is just move this over and we can solve for it. We know side C, we know side B, and we know angle B. So all we have to do is solve for this angle right here. Okay, so we use the law of sines and we solve for angle C. Next, what we wanna do, then we just apply our sum of all angles of a triangle is 180. We solve for that last angle. And then all we do is we apply the law of sines again and we solve for the last side right here. Simple. All right, let's go on to the next one. Now side angle side, we have a bit of a problem. We don't have an angle over here. We don't have the angle up there and we don't have the side over there. We can't sum it and we can't use the law of sines. So we're getting another goose egg there. Likewise on this one where we have all three sides. All right, well, we can, we can get the sides, but we've got to have at least one angle in order to solve for this. So we can't solve that either. So just to sum up, we've got six basic types of triangles and we've got two ways to solve for them right now. One is the summation method where we know that the sum of all the internal angles of the triangle is 180. The other is the law of sines and it's very easy to both derive and use. You know, the one other thing that we have in our armamentarium is something called the Pythagorean theorem and we've touched on this before. So for example, if this was a right triangle, we could say that a squared equals b squared plus c squared. If we had two of the sides, we could go ahead and solve for the third, no problem. We can't do that on a triangle like this though. And why is that? Well, this is not a right angle. And the other thing is, this whole thing would be side A it's a lot shorter than actual side A. If there was only some way that we could take this formula and maybe look at this side and maybe that side and make an adjustment for that angle so that we could find that side, wouldn't that be useful? Now it'd be smaller, of course, so there'd be a minus sign right there because this is smaller than that by that much. And we'd have to do something with these two sides, and then maybe we'd have to make an adjustment for this angle. And then we could use this to solve any triangle. If only we had a tool like that. Well, let's talk about it a little bit next time. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you for stopping by, and I do appreciate your support of this channel. Take care, guys. Bye.